this way. They do this way. There we go. <laughs> it is sunny and bright. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're finally here. It's Cedar Point. It's our first trip of the season, and I'm going to go back this way because that way you can see the coaster behind us. We got so much stuff to do today. It's not even funny. Uh, we got yeah, we've got Monster Jam VIP that we're gonna do. We got coasters. We got our fast passes on. We're over here. We're with our buddy Nick. He's here with us, hanging out today. It's gonna be fun. Let's go. So yeah, it's actually pretty packed here at the park today. I mean, Raptor right behind us right now, it's about around 10.30ish already. And Raptor right now is about a 45 minute wait. So yeah, it's pretty packed. Good thing we have the Fast Pass Plus one today, which the Platinum Passes that we have have already paid itself in full. And then if I go behind me here, there's one of the new restaurants. That's the Hugo restaurant, the Italian Italian kitchen, that's right, I just lost my head. Um, but yeah, there's the Italian kitchen, that's one of the new places, the Back Beat Q, which is in the back of the park, we will see later. Uh, I am seeing that they're up there. <laughs> it's Laura going up and Laura going down. Up on through. One thing that is very cool about this park, it is so picturesque. I mean, when you can go right down the jam, look at how beautiful that is. Such a perfect shot. It is an incredible day at the park today. A little bit busier than I thought it would be, but that's okay. No problems. Let's find out what's next on the list, though. I think. Oh, yeah, we're going to Gatekeeper. That's right. So, check this out. This is right next to the Pink's Hot Dog Stand, which is across the way from Raptor and whatnot, they made an Instagram wall. So if you win like something for your prizes or something, you come over here, you take a picture with it, and you're able to go up on social media and share for all to see. So that's a pretty cool thing. They took one of the uh, bays that used to have a game and turned it into an Instagram wall or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. <laughs> It's a tad loud right now, but that's okay. We're getting dive bombed by Max Air. So they're just now getting to where they're opening up the games. It's a little after 12 o'clock right now. Uh, we're actually going for lunch. Oh, that is cool. They have Deadpools back there. Fluffy, comfy Deadpools. But. We're actually getting set to go to one of the hidden secrets of this park, and it is not Forbidden Frontier, it is not Monster Jam, it is actually not even something that's actually inside the gate of the park, it's just outside, and could be a money-saving tip for anybody that comes to this park. We're about to show it to you. Alright, so I told you guys that there was a special hidden secret just outside of the park gate, and that's where we are. We're to the left of the season pass office, which is right there. Uh, just outside of the gate, they have back here, underneath the loop to um, Gatekeeper, they have a picnic area. You're allowed to bring your own cooler full of food, drinks, whatever. Saves a ton of money at the park if you don't have the dining plan or if you don't can't afford the dining plan. Um, if you can get the dining plan, definitely do it. It is worth it. But if you can't, you just want a normal lunch or whatever, you got a whole picnic area back over here that uh, you can eat at and bring your own cooler and food. It's what we do almost every time that we come, especially with the kids. Definitely worth it. And I think there's your buzz shot right there. Gotta love it. All right, it's lunchtime. Like I said, this is one of the cooler spots because you can come bring whatever food you want. We just bring peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. There are grills here. Yeah, there are grills Charcoal. here. Um, another cool thing about this spot too is, is that you have Blue Streak, which is behind me, that'll go by every now and then. You'll have Gatekeeper, which is just coming up and over through the keyholes. So you're gonna see it dive through this little section here in about three, 
to the longest delay that I can make this happen. There it is. And there it goes. So you get to you get to have that every now and then too. But this is a cool little place. Saves you a little bit of money when you come to the park. Um, like I said, if you don't have the dining plan, this is just a great way to save some money. Um, you do get the theme park seagulls. We know there are pigeons down in Florida, but there are seagulls up here. So, you know, it really never gets old looking at how good this park is from how everything looks from the Val Ravens to the gatekeepers to the Wicked Twister all the way there in the back. You got Max area there, and then you get just a good look right down. You got Power Tower and Top Thrill and Val Raven and even Raptor right there. It's all just the way it's set up. And what's funnier about it is, too, is when you look dead on, you would think that Power Tower right now is actually in front of Top Thrill Dragster, and it's not. It's actually off to the right side of the Top Thrill Dragster. Just in this look, it looks like it's sitting right on top of it. I'm pretty sure Alfred Hitchcock had a movie like this. I don't remember what it was. Could it be the Attack of the Seagulls? Are we just watching the birds from the Animaniacs? What's going on here? All right, so here at the Monster Jam Thunder Alley, we just got off because we did the uh, VIP experience on it. We just got off the black and green record machine known as Grave Digger number 40 that was specially built for this place. That was nuts. That was crazy. <laughs> That we got the front experience. I was in the back, and it's just like it was phenomenal to, to do. I, I hope they continue to do this. This is a ton of fun. Yeah, this was this was really really cool. Loved how it was. Uh, sitting in the front seat was actually spectacular. Uh, we'll actually have it up on our Instagram because I was able to take a video before we took off of what the what it looked like from the front of the truck. Um, going around the donuts, doing the cyclone was amazing um rear steer stuck a little on him <laughs> going around once we got a little squirrely which was kind of cool watching the seagulls go oh crap we're gonna die <laughs> yeah it was it was a lot of fun really highly recommend if you get a chance and we still got other stuff to show you guys but i highly recommend if you don't want to wait in a regular line for this get these um, it is so worth it. That ride, you go around two laps, which is absolutely sweet, cool. I just, there's not much more to say. Cedar Point, you did a hell of a job. Monster Jam, you did a hell of a job. <laughs> Take a look at this, guys. Here's the evolution of a zombie arm. You start with the plastic molding itself and the fiberglass molding that they pour into. Then when they pop it out, it's all the pink styling and whatnot, and then last but not least, they add all the airbrushing to it to give it that nice zombie look to it. And we'll show you over there uh, it moving. This is another cool one. This is a blank, if you can believe it, a blank Grave Digger body. The only thing that's on there right now is the Cedar Fair 2019 thing. But these are all hand painted, every single one of these. Even this one right here that has nothing on the decals or anything. Uh, just, it looks sweet. You can see the two moons, which that's ho something that hopefully soon uh, Spin Master does fix on the regular trucks, is that it's only the two moons. There you see that there, the cool uh, banner in behind it. There's so much stuff here to show. Okay, so this is the portion of the video where I have to talk over our footage because Cedar Point was really into blasting the copyright music in these displays, so got to bring in on the info on talking over our footage. As you can see, Jazzy here messing around with the transmission, and here's a good look at the engine that I found out that the Gravedigger shop uh, actually made this engine for the, dis the uh, display for Monster Jam Thunder Alley. They took an actual engine, cut it in half, made sure everything was nice and clean just to show you exactly what it's like and let you mess around with it. They had some gas shocks there, a nice set of uh, BKT tires that you could mess around with. 
go across the way and we had Evan playing in the sandbox uh, with he brought his wildflower truck, but he also found some of the 124th Hot Wheel trucks to play with. You go across the way from that and you go to the zombie display truck, which this truck is actually very special. You can see the arms moving by themselves and the mouth actually moving. That's only on the display truck. The arms on the race truck are free motion, so that's why you see them flopping around, but the mouth itself does not move. So that's why this display truck is a little bit better um, in terms of movement. Now, we also found out that the driver of Zombie, Baro Musawi, and Kayla Blood will both be in park June 15th and 16th. Uh, doing an autograph session um, on those two days. So that was actually pretty cool information to find out as well. I really liked how this moves around. As we get set to go to the back side of the truck, this was another cool thing that I liked on the back side of these displays. And that was this. They have these information cards that tell you like Zombie debuted in 2013. Talks about the driver, Baro Musawi, who actually started as an RC monster truck driver and got asked to start driving the truck. That's pretty cool. So these things tell you a lot of information. I like the color scheme on them as well because a lot of the times they were designed for the trucks themselves. Next look that you get to see, we go right up underneath the zombie display truck to get a good look at the linkage system and the roll cage itself and the fans and the motors everything that goes into and uh around these trucks the bkt tires that you see there and then directly across or in front of him i should say is max d who has a hot seat in front of him if you haven't been to a monster jam event the hot seat is where the driver that's in first place of the event in terms of either the two-wheel competition or the freestyle will sit until either someone bumps them off or the end of the race they get to sit in that they brought one of those to the monster jam thunder alley experience for fans to sit in and get pictures and you're gonna see here momentarily that both the kids um get into it and laura does as well but let's talk about the max d truck this was an incredible looking truck uh the professor tom mentz has been driving this forever it used to be goldberg then it was team mentz he's now a 12 time world champion he's won 12 different world championship events in monster jam as you see the kids finally getting their turn to uh sit in the chair and yes it's a rarity that they're hugging each other and being nice to each other no i'm just kidding they like each other a lot i really love the detail on these trucks how much more immersive they are they get so much better with them and it, it almost looked like a uh as you can see laura taking her seat on the throne there um it almost looked originally like it was like a a paper display or something i had to get really up close to make sure to actually see the fiberglass portion on it again the uh cards on the back to give you uh some information on it the way these sets look are just incredible uh you can't get any better than this i love the trucks that they did we went over to el toro loco because at this point laura jazzy and nick had gone to uh, Millennium Force to go get their ride. So me and Evan decided we would take a look at a few other trucks again. So we went over to El Toro Loco first. And this was another thing that I like. You actually got to get inside the trucks and check everything out. Got a good look at the horns. And now I see why Becky McDonough can never keep these things on. They were so incredibly light. Like I thought the fiberglass would be a little bit heavier for it as you get a good peek inside the truck. <laughs> we just finished with Millennium Force. It is still one of the greatest rides imaginable. I love it. What do we, how'd you guys do on it? So it was her first time when we rode it? 
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, right? yeah. it was very hard to keep your eyes open though. Yeah, here's the funny part, right? I'm, I have a fear of uncontrolled heights. So me riding on the what was what is considered the left side of the car is not a thing that happens for me very often. Because of this one, I did it. Never again. <laughs> Here's another part where they were blaring music really loud, but here's the entrance to Forbidden Frontier on Adventure Island. We're going to do this on another day. We just didn't have a chance to get it done on this day, but from what I've heard, it's like a two, three hour experience, so not something you really want to just duck in, duck out of. Here it comes. lovely wait that is Maverick. It took us 15 minutes to get on and off because the fast pass the regular line is about an hour and a half right now. But it was a smooth, smooth ride. They, they added a train signal, a railroad crossing in the tunnel, which kind of alerts you to when you're slowing down and then taking off. So that was actually pretty cool. Gotta love it. Uh, overall, just a great ride. Everybody got a chance to be on it. Uh, next up, we're just walking now. Okay, so rule one when going to an amusement park to vlog. Always make sure your backup battery is charged. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I finished up the shot with um, that we did when we had left the Maverick. And I looked at it, and the battery was pretty much gone, and I'm like, are you kidding me? But well, that's we okay. Actually, we're actually having battery issues with one of the batteries anyway, so it's... Yeah, we're, we're, we're in the midst of updating, and you're actually going to see some of the updates that we've done here in the next video that we do. But uh, overall, first trip out there this year, not bad. Had a few stumbles we, we, out of the gate, learned, but not bad. We learned quite a bit, um, for especially for those um, uh, that have to use the uh, uh, the accessibility, the the elevators and whatnot for the rides. We learned all about that, um, among other things that you know we were doing, and we did a ton of walking. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. What, she my she did step close count to like fourteen thousand steps. My step count was just below fifteen thousand by the time we finally got home. So. Yeah, we did a lot of walking, we did a lot of riding, and um, again, the Monster Jam experience. Fun. Go. If you like monster trucks, go, for not, the love of a, everything. I'm not a big Monster Jam fan, and I had fun, so... Yeah, it is, it is well worth it, but that was trip one of the year. We've got many more planned, we've got many other things left to go. We still want to go to Forbidden Frontier, we still want to... Um, we're going to take a walk around the water park, show yeah. that whole thing off. Uh, there's there's just a lot of stuff that we have planned, and, you know, the Platinum Passes are in place, so... They said you want to let me do the multi-pass bit, and I can't find it now, so... <laughs> she'll get boss. it in, she'll get it in, trust me. <laughs> trust me. She's going to get it in oh, one wait. of these videos. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> multi-pass. <laughs> See? Told you it was going to come at some point. Uh, Alright, but thanks for watching. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. We are done. Yay. <laughs> now I gotta edit. <laughs>